Good everybody, so we're talking real estate today. We're in one of my favorite locations, Auckland City Centre, and we'll be having a quick walk along Fanshawe Street to check out the latest real estate action. My name is Chris Fahey, I'm a real estate consultant based in Auckland, so let's get going. Now looking at Fanshawe Street, when Auckland City was still getting started back in the 1800s, uh, Fanshawe Street effectively represented the original shoreline for the city. This means that most of the areas to the north of Fanshawe Street are actually reclaimed land, so soil and sand was imported to fill up the sea. These days the beating heart of Fanshawe Street is really large corporate office space. If you look at most of the commentary about the Auckland CBD office market, you'll see different references to a waterfront drift and or a drift to the west. And so back in the 1980s and 1990s, the true sort of corporate heart of the city centre was along Queen Street and areas like Shortland Street. Um, but what's happened over the past decade is that there's been a steady transition of those big businesses down to the waterfront and down to areas like Fanshawe Street and Wingate Quarter. There's a lot of explanations for this with people referring to things like the amenity down on the waterfront, but I think the real big explanation for this is actually the availability of development sites. And so over the past decade, there's been a big demand from big corporates for large floor plate office buildings. And so these are so they can get more people onto a single floor. And so for that, you need large development sites and you um, generally are looking at lower rise construction. And so this area to the west of the city along Fanshawe Street and Winyard Quarter has basically been a prime destination for that because prior to the recent developments it was typically low-rise commercial buildings so the economics for large floor plate corporate office buildings actually works pretty well down here. Now during COVID-19 Fanshawe Street and Winyard Quarter has also been at effectively the forefront of the corporate subleasing activity in response to downsizing of businesses and shift to hybrid and remote working one notable example of this is the Air New Zealand building, which is sitting just behind me, where they had a pretty well publicised subleasing campaign in response to downsizing of their business. And so more recently they've announced that they'll be moving their headquarters back to the airport to closer align to I guess being an airline, and so that means that the future of this building will be something to watch over the next couple of years. We're now down at the Harbour Grounds development, which is on the corner of Gaunt Street and Viaduct Harbour Avenue, just off of Fanshawe Street, and of course, immediately opposite Bailey's House. The Harbour Grounds is a series of very large corporate office buildings, which are located on the waterfront. They're operated by 151 Property, ultimately on behalf of Blackstone, which is a major institutional investor. And so right now there's a big redevelopment project just behind me where they're taking what's currently the Microsoft house and putting a massive food offering into the location. And on top of this, they'll also be creating the Anchor Point public space. On this side of Fanshawe Street, you get really strong access to the waterfront and these corporate office buildings really take advantage of that. And the food offering and the Anchor Point public space will allow a much stronger connection to that waterfront amenity. We're now at 136 Fanshawe Street, so this is a large corporate office building which was completed mid-2021 um, by Manson TCLM, who is one of the more prolific developers of corporate office buildings around the Auckland city centre and city fringe areas. This building is a good example of their like go-to strategy for development, which is large floor plate corporate office buildings with high sustainability credentials. In this case, it's got an NZGBC six star green star rating, um, which puts it right at that top tier for sustainability. On top of that, one or two of the occupiers in this building, including two degrees, have undertaken a well certification of their office fit out. And so what this is certifying is design and performance features relating to the wellness of occupiers. So things like daylight, water quality and air quality. And this is one of the first examples of that rating being used in New Zealand. Looking back at the building, one of the things that you don't notice from the road is the huge scale of this building. Um, so for reference, this building is about 23,000 square metres of office space. And if you went down the road to the city centre, the ANZ centre, which sticks out on the skyline, is about 33,000 square metres. So this building is about two thirds the size of the massive ANZ centre. But in this case, they've split the building into two sub buildings in order to soften its presence on the roadscape. And obviously the large floor plates mean that it's not nearly as tall. As part of the development of this building, they also completely redid the pedestrian connection between Fanshawe Street and Graham Street up on the hill. 
It's fair to say that what they've done is a massive improvement over what used to be a pretty shonky goat track between Fanjul Street and Graham Street. Um, so yeah, that's a nice addition to the city. Just next door we've got 35 Graham Street, which has had quite a bit of action over the last couple of years. Back in 2018, this was owned and occupied by Auckland Council, and they made an announcement that they'd be looking to sell it as part of their corporate property strategy. The overall goal of that strategy was to consolidate their office spaces across the region, improve the effectiveness of their workspaces, reduce their environmental footprint, and reduce their operating costs. And so a year later in 2019, they announced that they'd be selling the property to Asset Plus. Asset Plus announced plans to redevelop the building, which they progressed for a while until ultimately actually reselling the property in April 2022 to another party. One of the interesting elements of 35 Graham Street is actually this mural behind me, which is heritage protected. This is the BJ Ball mural, and so BJ Ball was one of the prior occupiers of the building who specialised in paper. The mural was done by New Zealand artist Milan Murkusic, and so alongside the mural itself there's also a portion of the original building which has heritage protections. Now finally we're stopping by Clearpoint House which is just up here behind me. This property was part of a big packaged up sale and purchase transaction between Manson TCLM and Stride Properties subsidiary Fabric. And so during April 2022, Stride Properties purchased Manson's massive new office development at 110 Colton Gore Road in Newmarket. Now in return, alongside a big bundle of cash, Manson then acquired several properties from Stride, which included Clearpoint House just behind me. With that said, we'll wrap it up here. So thanks very much for watching. Make sure to smash that like button and we'll see you next time.